Hey everyone, welcome back to Fuzzy Logic Lectures. So far in this lecture series, we learned about crisp relations, crisp Cartesian products and compositions. In this video, we will learn about fuzzy relations, operations on fuzzy relations and fuzzy Cartesian products. In case you haven't watched the previous videos, I suggest you to watch them first so that you can relate the fuzzy topics easier or else you can hop in with your appropriate background knowledge. So let's start our lecture. Fuzzy relations are developed by allowing the relationship between elements of two or more sets to take on an infinite number of degrees of relationship between the extremes of completely related and not related. In the case of fuzzy relations also, they map elements of one universe to those of another universe through the Cartesian product of the two universes. However, unlike crisp relations, here the strength of relation between ordered pairs of the two universes can take any value between 0 and 1, both inclusive. As an example, consider the fuzzy relation R here. Seeing this relation matrix, we can interpret that Adya is more close to Matthew than Anne's because the corresponding membership values are 0.5 and 0.3 respectively. Similarly, we can say that Anne's is more related to Akbar than Adya. This way, fuzzy relations are more realistic than crisp relations which simply have 1 or 0. That is, crisp relations simply tell us whether they are related or not and not the degree of relation between them. Next, we have operations on fuzzy relations. Let R and S be fuzzy relations on the Cartesian space X cross Y. Then we can define the operations union, intersection, complement and containment in the similar way we define for crisp relations. Since we have already discussed these while we learned crisp relations in lecture 4, I am not repeating the same here. Instead, let us understand the operations through an example. Consider two relations R and S defined in X cross Y as shown here. Here, S has also Y3 in the relation. So, let us rewrite R to include Y3 also. So, we have R equal to X1, X2, Y1, Y2, Y3, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.8, 0 0.4, 0. The reason why we have 0 membership value here is because there is no relation between x1 and y3 or x2 and y3 in the relation R defined here. Okay. Now, R union S is given by x1, x2, y1, y2, y3 and the membership value of ordered pair x1, y1 in R union S is given by maximum of 0.7 and 0.1 which is 0.7. Similarly, for x1, y2, the maximum of 0.5 and 0.9 is 0.9 for x1, y3, the maximum of 0 and 0 0.2 is 0 0.2 and similarly we can write 0 0.8, 0 0.7 and 0.5. So this is our union S. For union operation, we simply have to find out the maximum of corresponding membership values in both the relations. Okay. Next, we have the intersection operation R intersection S for which the membership value of each ordered pair is given by the lowest of corresponding membership values in relations R and S. So, the membership value of ordered pair X1, Y1 is given by the minimum of membership value of 0 0.1 and 0 0.7 which is 0 0.1. Similarly, for x1, y2, we will consider the minimum of 0 0.9 and 0 0.5, which is 0 0.5. And for x1, y3, we have minimum of 0 0.2 and 0, which is 0. 
and we have point 0.6 here, point 0.4 here and 0 here. This matrix represents R intersection S. Coming to R complement, the membership value of ordered pair X1, Y1 is given by 1 minus 0 0.7 which is 0 0.3. For X1, Y2, we have 1 minus 0 0.5 which is 0 0.5. Here we have 1 minus 0 which is 1 and here 0 0.2, 0 0.6 and 1. So this is the matrix for R complement. Similarly, we can find out for S complement also. I will leave that as a homework for you. Also, I am not discussing containment operation for fuzzy sets here as it is very similar to crisp relations and we have covered it in detail in lecture 5. So please refer lecture 5 in case you haven't seen it. Now finally we have fuzzy Cartesian products. Consider a fuzzy set A in universe X and fuzzy set B in universe Y. Then the membership function of each ordered pair in the fuzzy Cartesian product A cross B is given by minimum of mu A of X and mu B of Y where mu A and mu B are membership values of elements X and Y in the fuzzy sets A and B respectively. As an example, Consider a fuzzy set A which represents the ambient temperature for a heat exchanger defined on a universe of three discrete temperatures x equal to x1, x2 and x3. That is x1, x2 and x3 represents three temperature values. And B which defines the optimum pressure for the same heat exchanger defined on a universe of two discrete pressures y equal to y1 and y2. So y1 and y2 are two pressure values. Now our question is to find out the efficient operation condition for the heat exchanger. And we are given sets A and sets B. Also here you can see that the membership value of temperature x3 in fuzzy set A is 0 0.9. And we have seen that fuzzy set A represents ambient temperature. It means that x3 is a more ambient temperature than x2 because x3 has a membership value of 0 0.9 compared to 0 0.5 for x2. Similarly, we can say that y2 is a more optimum pressure than y1 as y2 has a membership value of 1 compared to 0 0.2 of y1. Now, to find out the efficient operating condition, let us find out a cross b which represents the different operating conditions. So, let us write down the matrix x1 x2, x3 and y1, y2. Now the membership value of ordered pair x1, y1 is given by the minimum of membership value of x1 in set A and y1 in set B. That is the minimum of 0 0.3 and 0 0.2 which is 0 0.2. Similarly for x1, y2 we will find out the minimum of membership value of x1 and membership value of y2 which is minimum of 0 0.3 and 1 which is 0 0.3. If you follow the same way, we get 0 0.2 for x2 y1, 0 0.5 for x2 y2, 0 0.2 for x3 y1 and 0 0.9 for x3 y2. Okay. Also, coming to the efficient operating condition, we can say that the efficient operating condition is when temperature is x3 and pressure is y2 as 0.9 is the highest value in this matrix. Now please keep in mind that this is a very crude real life example and does not represent actual real life. In real life applications, we will be having much more complex fuzzy systems. Okay. Now one more thing you should understand is that every relation R defined from the fuzzy set A to fuzzy set B is a subset of the Cartesian product A cross B. Okay, that's all for this lecture. To summarize, we learned about fuzzy relations, operations on fuzzy sets and finally fuzzy Cartesian products. In the next video, we will learn about fuzzy compositions and properties satisfied by fuzzy relations. 
I hope that all the concepts taught in this lecture are clear to all of you. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask them in the comments. Either me or some other viewer will surely help you out. Also, if you found this lecture useful, please like the video and support us by subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching properly and have a great day.